everybody. It's Stephanie. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning and I'm like, I'm going to do a video because i got lots to talk about. First of all, yay, I finished my Rattler Trail Race um, in about 5 hours and 15 minutes. Um, so that's exciting. Also, I left him over on the bookshelf, but guess who I found when I was unpacking this bag that I hadn't even realized was still full. My nutcracker, Pedro. So he will be able to tell the funny jokes now. Yeah. Okay, guys, I have some stuff to share with you. Okay, so first of all, I did fall. Um, well, not just during the run yesterday or Saturday um, during the race, but uh, <clears throat> I was walking back from lunch to the rescue mission. We um, th they feed the staff for free and all. So, but it's like like a block walk down there, two blocks, I think just one block. It's not very far, but I was coming and um, some guys were walking next to me and I was like gonna smile at them, you know, and I trapped on the curb and um, actually it was weird. I didn't hurt my knees or wrists, but I just um, like part of my ankle ended up going into the curb so I have this I got this big scrape um right after that it was weird because normally when you fall everything else is bruised up so it was weird but it was nice because that's the only part that I'm recuperating from is just that really big um like cut that yeah bled a lot but again I always carry liquid bandage with me um to my um yes when I go to volunteer at the rescue mission. So I just sprayed that stuff on um, just because for also, I told you guys about when I uh, kick my heel against my ankle. So I always have that in my bag. So, okay, so yes, that fall, the worship song of the day is gonna be Trust In You um, by Lord and Dago. Okay, guys, oops, you guys went black already. Okay, the screen, okay, not actually black. Okay, so you guys, here we go. I'm gonna tell you about my race yesterday. Okay, so I accidentally ran 6.3 miles and a 25K is actually 15.5 miles because, okay, I always get lost in that park even when it was a very good designated that I was supposed to go that way. So two times I started down another trail and I was like, oh no, I don't see the blue. Um, like literally every tree has blue on it, like tied on somewhere or the branches next to it. Um, so I was like, oh no, I'm in the wrong place. So I added on almost a mile extra because I did that two times, but didn't take me very long to realize I needed to go back the other way. Um, so also, it was so muddy. It was kind of like the last time I ran in that park for my 10 mile race. Um, and I fell twice, which I guess the lady uh, at the aid station said a lot of people had fallen just because of the mud. It's ridiculously slippery and hard to run in. So even walking, I almost fell. So, and of course, the first time I fell, it was forward, like on my knees. And the second time I fell, I ended up like sliding on my back. And so my arms were really sore after the race. I was like, why? I didn't do any like exercise like that, but I put up my arms like this and, for, and it must have been fast that I ended up with them behind me. So that's how I must have like really made my arms sore, um, like the muscles in them. Uh, so anyway, I was covered in mud after, um, but it was awesome because Alicia, so you guys know Sean was supposed to take me, um, well, mom was going to take me and then Sean was going to take me and he got called into work. Um, so he had to spend th three days in Denver, uh, but he helped me go pick up my packet. Um, but Alicia, you know, my sister, um, was going to be able to pick me up. Uh, drop me off and I was like kind of bummed because I was like I really wish I had somebody you know to cheer me on and I thought Alicia was just gonna pick me up 
you know, after, and lo and behold, even though it took me so long to finish, guys, because I had like 19 minute miles, because there was a lot of walking and running, because um, I realized that's the best way to save my energy. So, um, the last time, so, okay, the last race I did, I thought it was six and a half miles, and it was actually ten miles, so I had the, the same situation where mom was going to be there to watch me cross the finish line, and it took me so long, so I was like, oh, no, I think, you know, if Alicia, maybe they're still in the car, so her and her three kids were there cheering me on as I crossed the finish line, so it was, like, awesome, but, you know, it's 16 miles, and I'm going to work up to, I want to sign up for it every year, and this and be more in shape and like actually um, get up to the distance with actual running but I ran probably 60-70% of it uh, but anyway next year I'm gonna run the entire way uh, but that's all about getting out there and doing this thing so um, alright so I think that is all you know trail running and Marcy is funny because she's like Yes, every tra trail runner, no matter what weather, whether it's muddy, you know, rainy, but it's like you're constantly dirty on your ankles and, you know, calves, especially when it's muddy and it's flying up. Uh, I saw one trail running guy that was in front of him. He ran by me and it, he was wearing shorts and the entire back of him was covered with mud just from the kick up of the mud from his feet so it's seriously dirty oh my gosh guys i had to take all my dirty muddy clothes off in where the shower is because i was like oh, i'm not getting this mud in my room so i took off my shoes outside of my room and left them outside and then did this with them you know and then put them in my cubby under my bed where i can keep my dirty shoes uh, but yes, I, oh, I was so worried, like, I, I had to, like, take my sock and, like, do this, like, a hundred times to get the mud off until I could actually put it in the wash, uh, just because it was so caked in mud. Um, but I like being dirty afterwards. It's kind of rewarding. Like, yes, I worked really hard. Uh, okay. Okay. So also, um, salsa dancing with Sean was awesome. I think I told you guys he knows how to two-step and waltz, um, and I, like, know how to salsa, and so it was so much fun doing that together, um, and he, he's, like, really, like, wanted to make sure he was doing it right, um, and so, like, he was, kept asking questions about is it like this? Is it like that? Anyway, we got it at the end. Uh, like, so it was really fun. And so we have one more salsa lesson tomorrow before I go see my babies. Um, yes, my babies. So that's for 17 days. And also I leave on Wednesday. So I'm so excited. I'm going to pack today. Um, tomorrow I should say. Oh yeah, and my cousin Adam was running the same race as me, but I didn't know if I would be able to see him or not, so I took two selfies of my, you know, uh, where it said finish line at the beginning of the race. It was so gold, you guys. Um, oh my gosh, but that's part of being a runner. You just suck it up. Um, but anyway, so I was like, oh, I, I knew he was going to be there, but I was like, I hope I see him, um, you know, so, um, okay, I'm always paranoid that I pause it. Okay, you guys, uh, okay, so just, okay, don't touch the computer, Stephanie. Um, so I was like, okay, hopefully we run into each other, and lo and behold, okay, so I picked up my packet, um, from the place Sean took me to get it, but somehow uh, I thought I put it in my purse, but I lost it and it wasn't in Sean's car. So it's like, what happened? So thankfully the people said, you can pick up your packet in the morning at the race. So I'm in line to get the packet and guess who's right behind me? Adam and his friend running this race. Uh, so they actually, we got some pictures, just me and Adam and Yes, uh, and so, yeah, this guy was like, I'll take pictures of you guys behind us. So I got to see him 
hug him and he's like, you should sign up for the Boulder Boulder, which I always wanted to run and you can come stay with us in Denver, him and his wife. Um, so I was like, if I can afford to sign up for the Boulder Boulder, then I'm going to do that. Okay, guys, I think... Oh yes, bruised toenails. I don't know if I told you guys um, I wore the run shoes last time. I don't think I did tell you. My last long run, maybe I did tell you. But anyway, uh, I wore my other shoes, not the ones that caused a lot of pain. So only towards the last couple miles could I actually feel the bruised toenails. But man, your feet get nasty after a long run. I've got calluses. I got black toenails from being bruised so my feet look really funky but that's why I'm giving them a break for three days because yes they that's a lot of running when it takes you that long so anyway okay I think that's everything all right can you guys tell I'm excited about going to see my kids and having got this awesome t-shirt the Rattler series I just oh okay phone was going up. Okay, so let's do the devotional. Okay. And just so you guys know, I'm not even bringing my computer to go see my kids, so I'm not going to do any videos. Just I'll obviously be putting on a lot of pictures, putting posting a lot of pictures. Um, so that is, yes, so this will be the last video um, until I get back. So, <clears throat> Okay, guys, um, remember the chapter is, I have to remember. Oh, yeah, Love Heals Over the Bridge of Time. Just going to read two paragraphs. It's important for all of us to find a safe environment where we can discover the healing possibility of our, in our lives, where we let time pass and do its work sometimes in the thick of cru okay in the thick of in the thick of crisis crisis grief and pain it's hard to get a perspective on how healing can come time efforts oh, offers that perspective that itself doesn't do the healing but using all the tools we've explored over time, can It just takes persistence, strength, and hope. It's, I have borne witness to hundreds of stories of crises when women came off the streets at, or out of prison. Sometimes women looked like they were beyond healing or it seemed their lives were such a mess there was no way out. But that is why we offer a two-year time period for women to live in the Thistle Farms community and focus on healing for anything, anything is happening. But then, over months, as the women are working and taking all kinds of oh, uh, oh, their kids, or they begin to make restitution with courts and credit records, it's light it's light dawns in their eyes okay just um so i know sean's watching this video after i upload it um but i just want people to know um oh i almost forgot to read the poem um this devotional is like based on well it's made this woman has a ministry to people who are have been sex trafficked um so that is Thistle Farms is in the name of the ministry where people go to get healing. So, okay. The poem of the day. Hey, there's another bookmark from Grandpa. Oh, okay. Okay. The season of the soul. <clears throat> Why am I cast down and despondently sad when I long to be happy and joyous and glad? Why is my heart heavy with unfathomable weight as I try to escape this soul-saddened state? I ask myself often what makes life this way. 
Why is the song silenced for the heart that was gay? In the heart that was gay. And then, with God's help, it all becomes clear. The soul has its seasons just as the same uh, as the year. I, too, must pass through life's autumn of dying, despondent period of heart hurt and crying, followed by winter in those for frostbitten hand. My heart is as frozen as the snow-covered land. Yes, man, too, must pass through the season God sends, con con content in the knowledge that everything is. Okay, you guys, you are all caught up. Time to pray. Lord, thank you so much for my amazing subscribers, Lord, and you are so awesome. Lord, just fill them up with your um, amazing hope as they're watching this video and that they would feel your peace and your love like they never have. Amen. Okay, you guys are all caught up. I will talk when I have more to say.